This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at Seagraph 2019. To my immediate right is Stefan Holzer. He is CTO and co-founder of a company called Fusion. Welcome to the program, Stefan. Thank you. So what does Fusion do? We do provide tools for uh, e-commerce customers or for marketers in general, digital marketers, to capture and visualize 3D content, but also to analyze that visual data and give their customers better information and better tools to make better online buying decisions. Okay, could you give a working example? Yeah, so for example, Cox Automotive, they're very big in the US automotive market. They do retail and wholesale of cars, and they use our tools to give their dealerships better better tools to image the car, to easily walk around and create a 3D representation of the car so that their customers can see the car in detail from any perspective in an interactive way. So under normal circumstances, if I were to buy a car online, I'd see maybe a catalog of cars, I'd get to click on a couple pictures, hope for the best and make my purchase. Uh, and in this case, I take it you're looking to find innovative ways to provide even more information. Does that sound about right? Yes, exactly. So we, as I mentioned, we, we analyze the visual data that we capture for our customers and then provide, uh, you know, objective information on the status of that physical object. In, for cars, for example, we can estimate whether there is damage, where the damage is located, how severe the damage is, and therefore give users a report or like hints on what issues there might be, or like just have a better idea of what they're buying. Okay, good stuff. Now, you're holding a lot of equipment in your hand. You're holding a virtual reality headset. You're holding a smartphone. Yes. So there must be a reason for this. Uh, let's start with the smartphone. Why are you holding a smartphone today, other than the fact that I told you to? Yeah, so um, our products are very much optimized for mobile devices. Our goal is to enable our customers to capture data using a mobile phone. So all they have to do is walk around an object and we create a 3D representation out of it and it's really important to support as many mobile devices as possible and not require any special special hardware from them. Okay, so for those unfamiliar now, when you say 3D information, you actually mean stereoscopic 3D, yeah? Like you're actually capturing, the, you know, volumetric information, but also stereoscopic that yes. if you're viewing it properly, you could see all those 3D depth cues, similar to what you'd have with, a, let's say, a 3D movie even. Does that sound about right? Yes, exactly. So our viewers not only work on the web or on iOS and Android devices, but they work on VR and AR devices too. So you can view it uh, if you want on, uh, you know, the Oculus Rift or the um, HTC Vive, but also on the HoloLens or on the Magic Leap. So we really try to support as many devices as possible so that our customers can choose the experiences for their customers. And what I find intriguing is that when you're capturing the information from a smartphone, most smartphones don't have stereoscopic cameras. They only have a single camera. So how are you compensating for, you know, to create that full 3D information with just a single camera? Yeah, so this one by accident has one. Uh, but in general, just walking around an object basically creates a set of virtual cameras. So we're really creating a multi-camera setup by just walking around an object, like a virtual setup, that we then use to do all the processing we need to do to create the 3D data that we need to visualize data for our users. Very cool. So, so for those unfamiliar, normally with a, a stereoscopic setup, you need a left and right camera view. So to capture a left and right view, yeah. and your mind or your, your brain combines them into that full stereoscopic image, I guess in this case what's happening is you're compensating for that where you have a single camera from a smartphone but you're walking around, it's capturing information from different points of view yes. and it's doing some type of algorithm or calculation to figure out well what would the stereoscopic equivalent be or volumetric equivalent be yes. so you get that full result in the end. Does that sound about right? Exactly. So the really important point there is for stereoscopic view to work really nicely, you need the the images that you present to the user to be at the specific distance, like in a specific 3D configuration. So we not only capture the images while somebody walks around the object, we then afterwards have algorithms that can re-render new views that haven't been captured specifically and present those in the in the device in real time. 
Now, I'm actually, how should I put this? I, I'm not giving this full credit yet because I'm speaking to stereoscopic 3D, but you're actually covering not just getting that 3D expression, that stereoscopic 3D expression, but you're getting some actual parallax movement as well, am I right? Yes, you can walk around, you can walk left, right, you can go forward, go closer to the object and go backward, and it will behave as the object is there in real, in 3D, in front of you. All right, good stuff. Now, something interesting about this. Now, the, there's a trend going on in the industry right now called the client to cloud revolution, which is what it means is that there's a lot of energy being spent in the cloud to enhance and enable all kinds of clients, be it smartphones and computers and consoles. Um, I take it you're kind of taking advantage of this too, because you know, I mean, you're doing this amazing stuff on smartphones, but I gather there's a cloud component to this as well. Am I right? Yeah. So depending on the needs of our customers, on their requirements, on what kind of phones they have, we either do processing on the phone or on the cloud, and it, you know, it's like a dial that you can move more more things on the phone if the phone is like um, powerful enough to do those complications or you dial it back a little bit and you can support lower end phones but then do more on the cloud and this way we we really provide a you know a wide spectrum of solutions for our customers so this is a really big enabler right because you know it doesn't matter what kind of phone you have i mean i guess you have to be concerned about compatibility in general yeah. but it, from the point of view of how powerful the phone is everyone has equal opportunity if yes, they use the cloud they get similar benefits if they have a powerful phone locally they get similar benefits yes. there aren't does it sounds like there aren't very many trade-offs to speak of Am yeah. I right? Yeah, we, we really want to enable everybody to use those kind of new technologies and not just the people who, you know, have the highest end phones or like the top tier phone of this year. We really want to make sure that everybody has that experience and has the ability to capture the data in the way we want to. Now, how many people would you estimate are using this technology right now? Right now it's uh, around 150 million active users per month. So it is a, a really big community that is using the technology in one way or another, and we are actually really proud about so having so many users. 150 million, if I know my geography, which I don't, uh, it sounds like about like half the American population. That sounds about, is that about right? Yes, it, it is not only in America. It, we are, I know, but from a comparable, yes. it would yes. be the equivalent of about half the U.S. population. Exactly. Yes, yeah. So that's very impressive. So the so now the, what you're offering is it something that uh, another service provider would use? Like so they use let's say your software to complete their you know web presence or h how do you interact with the client? What what role do you have when it comes to the final client solution? So we provide SDKs for capture. We also provide apps for certain customers where we build the whole experience for them. But we also provide uh, you know plugins for the web, etc. For different. VR, AR devices, so that um, everybody can has the experience, can have the experience that they want for their customer, for their customers. This is really cool. And just to underscore this, because we started off this interview, you said, "Well, we're going to provide information that otherwise isn't there, like stuff that's." Uh, I'm not. I'm paraphrasing a little mm -hmm. bit. So, what kind of information do you get from stereoscopic 3D or from content like this that you wouldn't just get from a traditional camera picture or even a series of camera pictures? So the, the nice information there you have is like you have the, the you get the geometry of the object and with our algorithms we also get semantic information from that like having having actually like a 3D information allows you to run your algorithms in a way more efficient a way better way better in the sense that you know like a single image couldn't just do that and therefore like all the machine learning algorithms all the things we use under the hood depend on on you know a multi-view setup or like a virtual multi-view setup by walking around objects and therefore they are way more powerful than just single image processing yeah you know the beauty of stereoscopic 3d content or even volumetric 3d content is you get all the nuances right you guys like as you move around like if you're talking about a car if there's some damage on the car, a picture might not make it obvious. Yeah. But then if you move around, you'll start to see little dents and uh-oh, there was a fender bender there I didn't know about. Yeah, for, especially for cars where you have reflective surfaces, you know, from a specific angle, it can just look perfect. So if somebody wants to sell the car, just take the image from the right angle and you wouldn't even notice that there's a damage. But if you are able to interact with it, where you just say like, hey, I would like to see, you know, just a little bit around this corner. You, you just drag the mouse, or you move your head, and now you get this information. And I think this is really powerful for people to, to make better buying decisions online and without 
necessarily having to be on site to see everything. And another benefit, and I know you're holding a head-mounted display and it's compatible with augmented reality devices as well, mm -hmm. but I, I would gather that even if you had a, just a smartphone and you could just like flow around the picture and look at the different angles, you'd get similar uh, benefits. You don't necessarily have all this immersive tech. You don't necessarily have to have all this immersive tech to benefit from this. Does that yeah. sound about right? Exactly, because I, the main, the really important part is, here is to have an interactive way to you know, interact with that data. So you don't just consume what somebody thought is the best way for you to consume it. You really have the power to control your own experience. So we capture the data for you, or like somebody captures the data, uploads it, and the viewers then present it the way you want it. You can, you can control the way you see it, and you can control what you see. So even on a, on a smartphone or on the web, you have all the control you want to see, to go around the car, to you know, go closer, go further away, and see it from all important angles. This is great. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for, for the interview. Th this is Neil Schneider for MTBS-TV at Seagraph 2019. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching.